was just a, a nice to have. So university for networking. So I'm gonna share that with you all. Uh, a little bit of background from my networking history was I started out uh, growing up in Seattle, stayed pretty much where like a 60 mile radius. And then as soon as I, I guess one year after college, I packed up all my bags, I put up my, sorry, no, I put up two suitcases, filled them up with everything I had and moved to New York, lived on a couch for about, lived in my friend's house for about three, four more months. And all while just trying to network my way into my next position, my next job, uh, my next uh, connection. Uh, it led me to, uh, if there anybody's familiar with the Hamptons, which is Long Island, it's way out east in New York. It's, I, it helped me network my way into getting access to some of the most exclusive clubs in and party scenes in the Hamptons. Uh, where like I think there was there was events where Dwayne Wade and other NBA players came to and those again were opportunities to network to get into my next position uh, and my next position where I was after that I networked my way into a managerial role for uh, a um, a testing company called Manhattan Review. And then from there, I networked my way into a sales, a director of sales role at a, a huge international import exporter that worked with China. And then also through that, I networked my way to connect with Javier. And honestly, my I never really had a resume. I never sent my resume out to anybody. Um, my resume is really is terrible. Um, so I just felt like well, my best asset was who I am as a person. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you all about. If you get to know people and you get your face out there, that will be more important than anything that you actually already know. Um, through this, uh, through this whole program, we're going to really focus on how to amplify yourself. Every person you talk to, every opportunity you have, anything that you do is a way to showcase who you are, your knowledge, how well you can make the next step into your career. Because it's not about what you know, it's about what people think you know. So to me, that's what networking is. And it might sound a little um grim but you can network your way into a job you can network your way into get, making a sale you can network your way into almost anything based on the people you know not the knowledge you have perfect example i was in a discussion the other day about barriers and one there's two people that have the same idea one person um, it took them 18 months to close the sale and one person three months. The person that had the three months had a better network base. They knew the right people to get their idea through. In fact, they only wrote the same idea. One person had a huge business plan. The other person had a napkin. The person with the napkin put in the right person's hands and was able to get funding within three months. So it's about expanding your network and, and making those different connections. So how do you expand your network? It's not, you can all be on LinkedIn, you can all go to events and just say, hey, my name's Calvin, nice to meet you. Hey, how are you doing? But it's about making these different network points and network connections, and then using that to then stay connected, okay? So when you're out there making your pitch, delivering who you are, always think about, they, they have a famous phrase in the States called with them, what's in it for me? So everybody, when they have these interactions are going to go, what's in it for me? Whether you're a software developer, 
whether you're a salesperson, whether you're a marketer, it doesn't matter. I mean, right now we're in a, a great time to be a developer because you have something that most people need. Um, you have something that most people need. You just have to let people know that you have what they need. So how do you expand your network? And why is it important? Like I just said, if you only know, if you only know 500 people or 100 people, your network is, is, is defined or your network can only expand by the amount of people you have. If you want to get a job at Google, but you don't know anybody at Google, you think unless you're rock star developer, first place hackathons everywhere, it's going to be really hard to get that right away. But that's not to say you can't work at Google, can't work at any of these companies by doing a couple things first. One, if you have a blank LinkedIn, you have a blank GitHub, any of that, whenever someone comes to visit you, they're not going to know who you are. So one, you have to let people know who you are. So we were just talking about LinkedIn, right? You can put in there, you can put all your information out there. That's only one way. And honestly, you might get you get might get reached out by people that you don't necessarily want to be reached out by. But it is a single point of contact anybody that you may want to show hey this is who i am so your linkedin has to be your brand presence of what you want people to come away with so if you are a react python aws developer and you just say hey i'm calvin smith i'm a software developer i like to code i know react i have react languages and I worked at this last job, I did some software development, and I graduated from the school, right? They're not gonna know, they're gonna be like, okay, next. So, and we'll get to, that's another whole nother thing, but that profile, when you show that to people, has to exemplify, has to showcase who you are. Hey, I'm Calvin Smith, a React, full stack React Python, AWS software developer about me. I've uh, graduated from, I'm a, I'm a full stack software developer in React, Node.js, blah, 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 blah. Um, I've developed three different projects while doing this. I've, last project, I did an API integration into this, 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 and now I'm looking to connect with the next company that wants to do this. Please find me here and share case your email. So that's one way. That's your single point of contact where you can divert people to. Now, that's your online presence. Now there's Slack and Discord. There's tons of channels. Now you can learn and work. I strongly, strongly encourage, and this is one of the biggest things that will work against you as a software developer, is you will get side offers and side jobs all the time to make an extra one to two thousand dollars a month and you might be like that's amazing and it is that's your side hustle but at this point in your career what you should be focusing on is amplify again amplify your brand how do you do that having a github having a green github working on that continually deploying open source projects yeah you might need that, like it's gonna take you an extra 10 to 20 hours a month, maybe a week to do that. But you know what? It's a stepping stone into your next career. So get on those different channels, connect, work with other developers in these open source projects and just ask them. Ask them where, where they are at in their career and ask them how they got there. Going to events. Now, as, as we are all in this space, Danielle and I just went to an event. Go out to events and work on your pitch. Your pitch, and we might even be able to do some 
might I might even pick on one or two people to do your pitch, but your pitch should leave that FOMO, that fear of missing out. Who is this person? Who is who is Carlos all about? What is his special sauce that makes him want me to work with him? Hi, I'm Carlos. I'm a I'm a I'm a full stack software developer with three years experience. I um, just finished a, an exciting program out of uh, out of Ecuador, focusing on React, Python, and AWS, where I launched this project where I could control lights all over Ecuador with a single button. Oh my God, how could you do that? Well, now I'm gonna ask you, how could you control all the lights on this one project you worked on? And now you have a discussion about how you can then divert people back to your LinkedIn or meet with you on another time to talk about your next job. And then finally, one-on-one -on -one meeting applications. They're all over. I think there's like, they might call like coffee break or um, I'll come up with a list of them. I'll send it out to everybody, but there's these one-on-one -on -one meeting applications. It's kind of like, think of it like the Tinder or Bumble of networking. You'll actually be able to do this for business and you're gonna meet a lot of cool new people. So yes. And discuss creating your pitch. Your pitch has to give them something. Think about you and give them a way to ask a question. So when you deliver your pitch to somebody, make sure that they know what separates you from somebody else or make sure that makes you stand out. And if you have the opportunity, research that person. Because if one of if I have a job and you know that I like baseball and you say, hi, Calvin, really great to meet you today. Oh, did you, were you able to watch the Mariners game last night? Now I'm going to talk about Mariners and now I'm going to have that connection with you. And now I'm going to be like, OK, I'm going to want to actually inter engage with you more and find out, oh, maybe you even developed. Then you can switch the topic from me watching baseball to a baseball application that you developed. And now that you know I like baseball, now we can I can actually talk to you more about baseball and the product that you developed. And I can just want to follow that more. Because you have to make this connection. Now, you don't have to build a baseball application just to talk to me, but you have to find a way to bridge that gap. Because already most people that are interviewing you or most people that are talking to you are finding any reason to tell you no and that's a that's a, a harsh reality most people are trying to figure out why they want to tell you no so you have to give them you it's it's harder to tell your friend no than yes so you want to try to break that gap between you two and make that connection so when you're going about your networking and because you want to cast a wide net, but it's who you start thinking about who are the people you should reach out to. Now, when I was working on helping developers network, I often said, had them start with just connecting with other developers. And it's about connecting with developers that are in a similar field as you. So let's say there's a startup that you're interested, maybe it, let's just take Rappi, right? You see a, a full stack software developer at Rappi. There's tons of them. You reach out to a few of them and you just say, hey, I'd like to set up some time to talk to you. And the point of that conversation is, how did you work at Rappi? How did you get that job there? Can you, what, what things should I study in order to be ready to work at Rappi? Maybe they're like, hey, you definitely should study algorithms. They grilled me hard on that algorithm uh, uh, portion of the technical interview. And then you can start preparing for that. You talk to another uh, developer that uh, worked at, I don't know, another startup, maybe worked at uh, Airbnb. And they're like, okay, definitely need to study uh, definitely study React really hard because that's something that they're really crucial and they really want to make sure that you have clean code. So you go through that. So now you start filling out your profile of what you need to know 
and you, now you still start to feel more comfortable. I also recommend looking at people. So I say VPs of engineers or CTOs because you want to look at people that are in the job that you want five to eight to 10 years from now because these can be like mentors for you. So if you reach out to them and say, hey, I really like where you are right now, what do I need to do to get into the position that you are in? And once you get to that, now you actually have a connect, you can actually build that connection, you can talk to them, and they'll talk to you as like a mentor. Now, you shouldn't take this as you're just some student and you're this young, uh, infant type person, but no, this is a valuable connection because this is a VP of engineer, this is a CTO, and you know what? They are usually in charge of any hiring decision. So while they might not be needing you for a job now, but if you're like, hey, so-and-so, I've just started my pathway in these languages. I want to develop this program. What do you, what do you suggest I do? And I'll give you hints. You follow them up, you follow, you keep that connection. Now, maybe in two years, uh, when you've grown your career and they're in a position where they can hire a developer, they're going to call you right up and you don't even have to worry about the interview too much because you're already going to pass most of the processes. And then CEOs, you know, if you make connections with them, a lot of people connect with me and just I become friendly with them and then I'll push them to different roles that I may know or other roles that I'm familiar with, with other companies, or I'll just pass them to other recruiters. Uh, CEOs always have a wide network of people as uh, it's part of our job. And finally, look in through the industry that you're interested in. So I brought up baseball. That's an interest of mine. So find interest industries that you're interested in. So if you really like I don't know, um, plants. Go find a, find a company that you're really interested in plants and connect with somebody in the plant industry. Those are major key components of where you need to look to for the people that you should connect with. So, we're gonna talk about the different stages of networking because it's not just all, okay, you're gonna reach out to people and then that's it. So I'm going to pause and because as a developer, what you really want to do, because it can be nervous, it can be really, really hard to do this outreach. This is the hardest part. You might go to an event. I said all this stuff and you, you might, it might sound super easy. Uh, one second, let me close this. These might sound really easy to do, but start small. These stages are crucial as you go through this process because finding people and reaching out to them and most of them saying no to you can really hurt your demeanor. But it is part of the process. I, I'll go through some things and you know when I first started out, most people just ignored me. It's part of the process you learn. It's each time, even now I'll get no's a lot, but each time you learn from that and go, you fix your pitch up each time to see which, which part of it worked and which part of it didn't work. So for this first stage, you're sending out your pitch, you're reaching out to them. And then once you make that connection, you stay in contact, you gotta, reach out, connect, and follow up with them. And for the most part, have fun. Uh, networking is actually really fun. Uh, you get to meet a lot of interesting people. You get to connect uh, and you get to learn a lot. Uh, when I go to events, I always try to find a couple pieces of information that they will have. Uh, that I can learn from, whether it's about cybersecurity, whether it's about import or export, anything that it can be, something that they're going to say will be interesting. And having that open mind, you can then engage with them and make the whole process a little bit more fun.
Uh, I'll leave it with that. Um, oh yeah. I forgot also, when you go to these events, have a goal in mind. Now, start off small. Maybe say you go to an event and say you just want to meet one person. Just meet one person. If you haven't done a lot of networking, the goal could be I want to connect with one person. You go to another event. I want to connect with two people. And if you start off small, you take these steps, eventually, you'll get to a process where you get it and it makes the most sense for you. This networking will never leave you, regardless of if you have your ideal job, if you have the ideal role in life, you will always still need to network because like learning, um, it's a never ending topic, it's a never ending opportunity for you to find something or learn something new. So with that, what I will do, we'll have a, a pretty, what we can do now is kind of uh, uh, do some uh, pitch practice. So I'll call on, we'll do a little whiteboarding action. I think I can even whiteboard in here. Yeah, start a new whiteboard, create a jam. We're gonna jam out everyone. Yeah, send it out, let's do this. And go. So I will call on let me I'm calling the seventh person in my tile. If I can switch to this. Dang it. How do I go to more people? Oh, there we go. All right. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eddie, it's you. <laughs> Are you ready, Eddie? Where did my whiteboard jam go? There we go. Speaking, you mute microphone. You need an app. Hello. I said in, in my person, in my personal uh, phone, um, I need an, an app. Um, now I um, download. Wait, so it's Eddie, okay. So if it's not Eddie, we're gonna go to Joel, Joel. Sorry, I, on my phone too, <laughs> I don't have to. You don't, no, that's okay, you don't have to. I'll do all the writing. I just I, need to talk. I try okay? to, I try the link, but I have to install the app. I, I'm going to do that. No. No worries, Joel. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna do all the I'm gonna do all the typing. I just want you to do all the talking. Okay. Calvin, Calvin, do you want to share the whiteboard as well? Oh yes, I'll do that. All right, so Joel, we're gonna do this. All right, dang. all right, and what we're gonna do open. I've never done this, so this will be exciting. All right. All right, Joel. Let's, all right. So tell me if you could tell me if you could tell me who you are in one sentence. How would you do it? Give me 10 words about Joel. Uh, I'm a IT professional. I like reading all kind of books. Uh, I'm a singer too. I like to write stories. That's this. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, I thought everybody had permissions, but okay. So IT professional. Um, what do you think IT professional means? 
actually, right now I'm working in IT security, but I, I What's was, the job uh, that you want? Let me do this. I'll do this better. What's the now, job that I, you want? I'm the, I'm the head the of IT security. What's the role that you want to have in software development? I want to become a data engineer. Data engineer. Okay. Um, and what language is most important to you? Python. Python. Okay. Uh, and how, how many years have you been working in Python or in a data engineer related field? I'm just starting. <laughs> just starting. Okay. Maybe uh, I have six months. six months. That's fine. It's a data engineer, uh, Python. Uh, have you do you have, have you worked on any projects where you've had to use Python at all? I'm working in data camp projects. A what? A data camp? Yeah. What's a data camp? Uh, it's a learn portal of uh, data science education. So what's a project? So like, what's something that you could say? Like, you said you like music, right? Uh, I would love to know if, like, if I was pitching this, I'd say, hi, my name is Joel Renoso. Uh, I'm a data engineer professional specializing in the Python language. I recently developed this m music application where I could integrate all the different songs of the world where I can just then click on a yeah. button to listen to it. That's what I'm trying to get out of you. Do you have an application where I could do that or do you have something that I can go, wait, how did you do that? Do you have something like that? Not right now. Okay. So that's one thing I would recommend you start doing. Do you want, like, work on something? Whether, like, you, you say you have a passion for music, right? Passionate about music. Right? Do you play any instruments? Uh, guitar. I'm learning guitar piano. Guitar and piano. Fine. You can even build a project using Python doing that because you're passionate about it and it might be really fun. You don't have to change the world with this. You just have to do something that people that you can share with other people. Um, okay. That's like your, your initial pitch about yourself. Okay. All right, let's do this yeah. with... All right, so that's Joel. You're off the hook now. I mean, you got to do more of this, but I'll, I'll give you off the hook now. How about... Okay, so... Well, next down the list, we'll do one more. Thanks. I look. <laughs> yes. Michael, you're up. Michael Mora. You're up. Pitch me, pitch me yourself in one to two sentences. I'm a software developer. Um, and that who, who loves and uh, learns something new uh, every time. And also likes video games. And in movies and series uh, in English. So just for you all, uh, just for you all to know, when I hear this, I hear, okay, this person doesn't know English well, he just kind of like, and I'm not saying this is true, and I'm gonna help you, Michael, to how to do this, the same exact thing, but a little bit better. I'm hearing, oh, he just wants to learn English. He likes to play video games, and he knows something about software development. Don't really know what he knows, but maybe something. Same thing. What I did with Joel. So I'll do the same thing with you. Okay. So you say you're a software developer, correct? 
Yes. What type of software developer? Mm, I'm moving to full stack developer because I usually work in cross platform applications. You said cross-platform applications. Okay, we're going to use that later. Okay, what languages? Uh, for full stack, uh, well, um, React, Python, and JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when you say cross-platform applications, what are you... Um, specializing there. With What's an application that you can point out to me to brag about? Mm, an application that I I did, for example, or worked on. Yeah. In, when my university project was a cloud platform application that was uh, to provide services and hire services from a professional, and also I made a. Uh, some in stores develop developments uh, for some stores here in Ecuador. Okay. Oh, so I'm just going to take this. We're going to go with this. Move this. So again, now. Oh, also, I want to also tell everybody in your pitch, nobody cares about your hobbies or your whether you want to like to learn or whether you like to learn English. Uh, nobody cares about that because. Everybody, I, I mean, who here doesn't like to learn? Everybody likes to learn, yeah. right? Um, so I wouldn't say that. If you like video games, the only way that you want to mention whether you like video games or any of your hobbies is if you built something that you can tie that to mm -hmm. something specifically. So how I would change your pitch is, Hi, I'm Michael Moore, a full, uh, professional, uh, an experienced full stack software developer focusing on React and Python, building cross-platform applications. Uh, something I re built recently was this uh, cloud platform application where you can actually, where I was actually able to provide services and hire services from people all over Ecuador. Okay. Okay. Keep it short and simple. Do not, do not mention hobbies like not at this point unless you have something to tie it to again if you say i i, I built this application on uh, uh, like i would mention a hobby if you can bring it back to something that is related so if i really like if you research me michael and you're like oh i saw calvin playing uh i don't know some video game i'm not i'm not i don't like videos but if i you saw me playing some video game and i posted it somewhere on twitch or something you go um uh, i recently played this call of duty and did something with that and number top 10 cloud of duty person in the world mm -hmm. i'm like oh wow that's really impressive i just played call of duty tell me more but if you're like i just kind of play call of duty for fun I die all the time like that's it doesn't do anything for me it has to give me something to ask you about right sorry and, uh, oh if you okay so there's other ways to state like i said if you like you say recruiters will ask you these things sometimes to figure out whether you know english or not there's other ways to show that you know English, right? Like I said, if you can detail, so one of the things that trips people up when they're asking is, and this is a whole nother thing, but, and I'm sure you guys have gone over specificity. Like Americans really like specific things. So when I ask you something, I want specificity. So I don't want general terms, but when you're pitching yourself as well, you don't need to give everything you need to get them to FOMO. So if you're like, if you're going to go to an event or you're going to go on LinkedIn and find a software developer that again, I recommend all of you to first just reach out to a software developer that's at a company you would like to work at because it's the easiest entry level into building your network. Because again, Michael, you can say, hi, 
Jose, um, Maria Jose, I see that you're working at a uh, company Y. Super interested in that. I'm currently a full stack software developer. I build a couple cross platform applications. I'm specializing in React Python. I'd really like to talk to you because I noticed your company is building React Python applications. And I'd really like to learn what it is that you did to get to where you are. And you focus on them because part of networking is getting the other person to talk more. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that's always crucial that you should always carry with you is people like to talk and people like to sound important. So if you give them that space to sound important, you give them the opportunity, they will take it. And it's an easy way to get yourself starting in networking. So I'd recommend everybody just start with that practice. Like, okay, like you don't have to be an expert as a data engineer, Joel, but you have to let them know you are a data engineer. You know, you're not saying you're the best data engineer in the world. You're just like, I'm a data engineer specializing in Python because that is what you're doing whatever because now they're hitting those keywords um I'm, uh one of my passions is music that i have now developed uh, a project on and then you kind of give some tips about what is that project or that that uh the organization that you're at um uh i'm currently in this program studying focusing on uh, cybersecurity, doing this, this, and this. I don't know what the program's about, but you can talk about it a little bit about how it can potentially differentiate you from somebody. People that go to this program typically work at, I don't know, Rappi. I'm just gonna use them. Or Mercado Libre. I don't know, whatever one you wanna say. Uh, you have to give them some point of reference so that they can ask you about it oh what makes this program so special why this program only accepts one percent of the people in ecuador oh wow that's incredible or yeah uh, so yeah that's kind of i will get, leave you with those things network is networking is hard start with baby steps start with developers Get them to feel special, work your way up to CTOs and hiring managers or VPs of engineers. Get yourself a mentor because uh, that person will then vet you themselves for a potential opportunity down the road, as well as going to events. Start small, one person, get your pitch down have your hobbies in your back pocket that you know because if that joel if you're talking to someone and you notice that i don't know you start talking about guitars you have that reference don't just not talk about it just be a person be human at that point the first point that i'm trying to do is just get them to say hi um yeah I think you it, it, it's all something that you have to do. It's all something that you have to fail at. It's all something that you have to try. Uh, I think if you could, if I'd have one ask of all of you, it'd be to reach out to 10 to 10 developers by next Thursday. Reach out to 10 developers that are in a position where you want to be and reach out to them and just say hi and get and set up a call get one call by next week. Talk to 10 developers, get one call by next week. Now you've already expanded your network by 10 and you already got a personal connection by one. It's more than what you had last week. Yeah, any so, questions? Yeah, who's up for the challenge? <laughs> Everybody. Yes. Yay. Great, Alex. Who's joining? 
Who else is joining? And everyone to do it. <laughs> oh, so everyone is doing it then. Especially Vanderson. <laughs> out there in Brazil. Oh my gosh. You got this. How do you feel about um, giving your pitch, Vanderson? Pitch Vanderson. Oh my god. Um I speak I speak about uh, um my professional is I work in with mobile development and I have a lot of uh, apps in these stores and especially using React Native with the JavaScript and uh, I I make a little bit projects from um, for example the same MVP projects from uh, little startups in Brazil and uh, I, I um, between other things I working and uh, mentor with another develop, developers too and uh, I love it programming from mobile developer for mobile and uh, what more <laughs> um that's it i don't i don't think another 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 um uh, another thing there you go that's your pitch i don't know i made up the number <laughs> <laughs> um something like that and if you have something that you can point to do it don't feel like you have to talk more than you need to it's okay to pause um, Anderson, professional React mobile developer. I've built 25 applications for startups all over Brazil with uh, uh, a cool one out of the park. I don't know. You have to say something specific, but then just pause. I, I think I speak a wrong bit, but I, I published a lot of uh, apps, but um, 10 apps in total. I just made that number up. Ten apps. Awesome. That's ten more than I've built. <laughs> Twenty-five. Um, the I, I don't know when this is the future, baby. But uh, no, no, at no. <laughs> oh yeah. So for all of you, I recommend work on that. It's a thirty. Keep your. They call it the elevator pitch. Keep it short. Keep it simple. Um. And make it impactful. Give something people to remember you by. Yeah. Um, right. Pitch elevator. There you um, go. Oh my god. Um, I <laughs> I I make a this describe a little phrase. I'm the best mobile developer that. And you can't find to develop your business. <laughs> that's your that's your uh, that's your SEO pitch. Yeah, <laughs> the last year, um, in the last year, I I make uh, no four. I make four apps from another another. Um, Another kind of uh, business, for example, I make uh, apps from um, Bureau of Credit and uh, healthcare and uh, seller from gas. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bottle get bottle get bottle gas. <laughs> bottle gas. Bottle gas. I I don't know speaking the uh, in in English and uh, a big bottle from um yeah oh. of the cocina and yeah, chicken I think you mean I don't know for pain yeah 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 and uh, I I make a little app from the seller in propane in Brazil because in Brazil is common and sell 
big bottle with propane inside. Don't uh, don't use common like in that. USA. <laughs> for our barbecues, for our barbecues, we have propane. Yeah, chill. But charcoal's better for our barbecues. <laughs> yeah. Well, with that, uh, anybody have questions about pitching, networking? Um, I'm on the community chat, so if anybody has questions, feel free to reach out to me there. Um, yeah. It's all for networking. It's, 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 it's difficult to uh, make a little bit about, uh, about uh, yourself because uh, for me it's strange but um, in you say i don't know if uh if working in this context i i have a, a lot of interviewer but in this context in the i don't see in the pitch interview for example i I speak and CEO and a uh, big company. I have uh, 10 seconds from speak about me. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's very strange for me. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things you just have to keep trying. Uh, even if you're doing the first interview, they're going to be like, so who are you? What? Tell me about yourself. Same, similar concept. Um, but you just have to practice it more. That's why. If you start with developers, they're friendlies. They're a lot more willing to talk to you. They're more willing. They know they can't give you a job, so there's nothing like to struggle with. It's more just learning opportunities. And then it's an opportunity for you to practice. Uh, I've definitely, I, I've helped people get into a job where um, they took two or three of these interviews each week and then because it, it helped them prepare for an interview at um i don't know some medical company and she got in as a software a junior software developer she had very little experience but got in another one just got in as a web developer somewhere and then worked his way through networking through the company to become a a, a react developer at the company so um these definitely pitch practices these network practices will help you in there and then yeah imagine and the, the imagining and how to find steve jobs in corridor steve jobs example. in the corridor yeah, yeah. Ah, well, i i i am um i going i will speech in the corridor from steve jobs for example it's very yeah their pressure is many pressure with with yourself is very interesting. Yep, I mean, if you're able to get somebody, you have to be able to impress. You have to be able to get them to ask you, "Who are you?" So. So well, before we end the session, I would like to hear. Uh, what would you like to see in your next bonus session? Would you want more pitch practice? Would you want more uh, techniques to an assertive communication? What would you like for your next bonus session? Just think about it. You don't have to answer right now. Think about it. Let us know in the Slack channel. We would definitely like to create a bonus session. You would be expecting you would be willing you know to engage in and make the most out of it so i leave you with another homework besides <laughs> well i think there are no questions here <laughs> Omar, I was wondering. Go ahead, Omar. <laughs> Hi, Calvin. Um, I, I, I wrote in, in the chat that uh, sometimes uh, recruiters can uh, can ask you uh, about your hobbies. Uh, 
twice uh, they ask me, but I, I, I think that they do this because they want to know your level of English, I think. Uh, but I get, I got your, your idea that is, uh, the, what is mainly is um, uh, another things, not the hobbies, no, because uh, of if I am good to do something, uh, I wanted to ask you something. Um, how can you how can I say something about my skills uh, uh, without uh, showing myself like a proud person? Uh, you have to uh, be a proud person. So, like, give me an example. No, um, I mean, if for example, I am good uh, in some languages, so. Uh, and I can say I do this, I do that, but uh, I would like, to, but maybe it can sound uh, like, uh, maybe I am a liar or maybe I am a, a proud person. A proud person. Tell me. Huh? What? Tell me. Like, do it with me. Uh, no, I, I am telling you. How, uh, no, I, I would I'm like that. I am I, like, hey, no, I'm but I am Omar telling you that. Ramirez. I I built okay. the coolest application in the world. Oh, cool! What's the application? Uh, picking up dirt. Oh, but I uh, uh, so okay. kind of I dirt. mean uh, I I think that I cannot say I am the best uh, Java developer, okay? Because okay. Uh, because I am not the, the best. You know, but okay. if I was if I was the the best, I could say that. Yeah, if you were. You you got first place at a hackathon and like you could say you're the best vec developer in your region because you competed in some hackathon or you had some notification. Now if you just built some Java application, then you're like, oh, okay, I'm the best. Well, that's not good enough. But if you say you run, uh, uh, you're a very good Java developer. How am I to determine whether you're very good based on? uh very good is subjective best means number one so that's pretty easy to determine but very good is oh i'm one of the it, but i wouldn't really focus on those type of adjectives i'd focus on i'm uh i'm an experienced java developer because now you 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 are experienced correct you do have experience in it and if you know how many years you can always say i'm a I have four years of experience in Java as a Java developer or Java engineer, um, building applications ranging from healthcare to um, agriculture, uh, like that. But I, I wouldn't say I'm the best or I'm a really good developer. I would focus on, um, and any of, like if you're, if you have one year of experience, you're still an experienced software developer. So I need to say I have, I have just one year of experience. No, just say I'm an experienced software developer. Don't give them too much information at this point. Mm -hmm. Just say I'm an experienced Java developer. Or I'm an experienced software developer focusing on Java. Um, a cool, um, something I've built and then an application I've built is a tool to remotely pick up dirt using the raspberry pi i don't know makes i mean like actually that's where you have to tell the truth about like be very specific about what you developed because that's as a software developer that's what i want to know as a someone that wants to network you that's something i want to know about mm-hmm like, is that what you're asking? Or were you asking, like, or how are you talking about bragging or being too proud? No, it's, co it's correct. Maybe I, I want to know many, many ideas that you can give us. Uh, yeah. But if, for example, I'd, I, I, nowadays I am, I am looking for uh, new jobs. And, I, I I can see that recruiters are looking for seniors more than junior. Sure. 
Uh -huh. So oh, also, by the way, it should never stop you from applying. Mm -hmm. I told junior developers to apply for year, jobs that said five years of experience all the time. They're going to tell you no, but maybe you can get into an interview and practice. <laughs> to mm -hmm. be honest, half the time you just have to practice. Uh, but also, that's why I say if you talk to VPs of engineers or CTOs at companies, and you work with them not as a way to get a job, but as a mentorship, you never know when they can hire uh, somebody or they'll be in charge of the hiring process. And you know what? They can then be the advocate for you at a company. I mean, there is one person in this room right now that does that all the time for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so that person will then be your guiding principle and say, hey, actually give this person a shot. So okay. that's why I also recommend to you, regardless of if they're hiring or not now, still get those. I recommend if you could get five people in a position that's about five to 10 years senior than you, keep in touch with them forever. I am doing that. I'm trying to to learn. Uh huh. Great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Calvin. Of course, of course. And Eddie, in regards to the community service, like if you're applying to a job at the UN, maybe I mention it. And honestly, it does. Like, and what Alex said, yeah, it does. But or if the company has a strong like say you do community service, but if you're just picking up trash, well, maybe if it's a company that focuses on picking up trash, then it's a great community service uh, connection. If you're working at a company like a social media company that doesn't care about trash, there's no point to mention it. Part of networking is always about seeing, it's all a game of what are the connection pieces. Um, Sometimes if you have no clue about them, you cast a wide net and see what they pick up on. So maybe you're talking from any, from a community service standpoint, you drop it in when you're talking to somebody, Hey, yeah, I'm software developer doing this. Just last week, I worked at this uh, community service where uh, I volunteered to serve food. It was really fun. And then you keep going and then you, you have to watch their reactions. And if they react to that, oh, you picked up food or you delivered food, then you build up on it. Um, that's an in-person thing. Yeah. And that comes with practice. Yes. Can I add something to that? Um, there, were, there were two times at the conference when we were at Miami that uh, one was with Ivan that we mentioned we were from Ecuador. And just mention it, like, if you don't know what to say, you would just like, oh, I'm from Curitiba, Brazil, or I'm from Guayaquil, Ecuador, whatever you want, but related to you, sometimes it picks uh, the, other person attention, the other person's attention. So with the first one, I was actually talking with a um, guy that was a uh, manager at Uber and just because I told him I was from Ecuador and he was going to Ecuador the next week and he was coming because of his birthday. And I told him, hey, tomorrow is my birthday. And that way we connected. So it was like nothing to do related to work, but it was a way to keep engaging in conversation. And now I have him on my Instagram and not only LinkedIn. And with the other person, um, we were talking with the team at IBM. So who could imagine like you would be talking, having lunch with the IBM team. And we were talking to a Mexican uh, that uh, didn't know anything about Ecuador, but he was very interested to know about Islas Galapagos. So we just like drop him like, hey, whenever you want to visit, just like uh, hang out with us or just like email us. This is my LinkedIn. And that way you just slip your contact information. It may not be related to work, but it helps you get the, like, seal that connection to follow up later. Exactly. And again, it comes with practice. Yeah. You have to do it. You have to fail. You have to just do it a bunch. Go to events.
go online, reach out personally. Uh, and if you don't have it, try to get your LinkedIn to at least 500 people or 501 people. Because then it says 500 plus on your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> so regardless of how many you have, at least if you have 501, I'll say 501, 500 plus. Yes. So Calvin, thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate your time here. And thank you, everyone. Oh, Gummy, go ahead. Oh, oh, was it, was it a mistake? Oh, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to put an emoji of like clapping or something. <laughs> let's, let's clap. Let's everyone clap. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, we're all clapping. That's the way. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Thank you very much for your time, yeah, Calvin. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, so Glad I could we'll be see, here. Yeah, Thank we'll you, see Calvin. Better. Thank you. We'll see each other in another bonus session. Remember, this is your time to practice English. So whenever you can, engage in conversation, not just written conversation. So let us know what do you want to see in your next bonus session, and we'll get it. We'll make it happen. Okay. So take care. Thank you for right, your thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next class. Bye.